Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, life coach and meditation coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, a mental health coach and future psychologist, psychology practitioner or clinical therapist, whatever you guys want to call it out there. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. And today's topic is going to be about friendships. You know, when you think about friendships, you think about, that's my drinking friend. You may think about, oh, that's my party friend. That's my smart friend. That's the one I can depend upon, right? Sometimes friendships fit in different silos. I don't know why, but I guess different parts of your life. And, uh, you know, and, and obviously when you go through a life cycle, like, you know, if you're in your 20s and you're drinking, you're partying, over time you may say to yourself, I don't like that anymore. And my friend still wants to go out and party and drinking, but I don't anymore. How do you end that friendship? Like, should you still go out and party because they want to and you guys are friends? What should you do? And what is the best practices? And, I guess for me, I will start and talk about me. I don't have many friendships. I do have a lot of people I know and a lot of acquaintances and, and uh, connect with people on different levels, but I just don't, maybe I have a two, three, you know, really, really close friends. I don't have, you know, different friends for different silos. Um, I grew up in the, in the context that the less people you have in your life, the less problems. I guess they kind of paid for it. My dad told me when I was a kid is less people in life, less problems. And I don't know. Like I, when I think about it, it's like, do I want more friends? I want less friends. What's my need? What's not my need? I guess I'm being logical about it. I should just be, you know, learning about it. So what do you think, Gloria? I have a question for you though. <clears throat> what is friendship for you? Friendship. To me, when I think about friendship, um, I think about a person or persons where you can connect, you can mm-hmm. be vulnerable, you can discuss open questions. Um a non-judgmental zone, um, communicate, you know, in sometimes situations where someone's offended and it could be a simple, I said something, uh, the person got offended. I didn't know they were offended. Communicate it. You know, it, it, it should be almost a free flowing environment where you can just be yourself. And they can be yourself. Um, there shouldn't be judgments in a friendship. That's for sure. Leave that out the door. Um, because, you don't know. And, and I think in a friendship too, after some experiences, most people go to a friend or friends for advice and everybody has a different opinion about the advice. For me to be a true friend, I would never offer advice. I always offer them a different way of looking at it and have them make their own decision, right? Because nine times out of 10, we come to your friend for advice. You already know the answer. You're just waiting to them to agree with you or you waiting for them to disagree, wherever you're kind of feeling. So that's my idea of friendship. Yeah. <clears throat> so friendship, like, I like that. I think for me, it's it's this, um, it's a relationship that you have with, um, with people, right? Um, you have this strong form of, of bond with them that you created or you started with them. And then you have that connection, that chemistry with them. 
And mm-hmm. this this form of friendship could happen with, um, it, it could just be someone you had just met, or it could be someone that you've known for a long time. Um, yeah. And then, you know, there's, there's different types of friendships, right? There's, there's a, there's a true one. You have like your true, what you call your true friends. And then you have your acquaintances. And then you have those who are just your friends from like different circle of friends. I think at some point I had, I had like growing up and um, when I was just really out there playing volleyball, going out and then, when I was working at corporate, I had different group of friends or different circle of friends. You know, I have my friends from work. I had my friends from volleyball. I had friends from somewhere, but, yeah. and then I have my, my, what I call my true friends or my ride or die. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Do you think acquaintances and friends belong in the same category or two separate categories? I think two separate categories because, um, you know, you have your friends who you share a certain connection with, um, and then you, the acquaintance is pretty much just someone that you know from somebody, right? And then you, or you know through someone, and you only get to talk to or hang out with that person when the other person is there or is around, and that's the only time you really see that person. Interesting. So in a in a yeah. friendship and acquaintance, is there a relationship that's there? You know what? Not necessarily. I don't think there is. Um, not not in an acquaintance. There's really no relationship there. Like I, for me personally, that's that's how I feel and that's what I think. An acquaintance for me is just someone that I know. And when I see that person, I, I say hi, bye. Um, I don't really have that kind of relationship where I am constantly talking to this person, hanging out or texting. Mm -hmm. Because you know what, at least what an acquaintance and a friendship, I think the similarity is there's a rapport there, Mm -hmm. right? So if you think of acquaintance, you know a person by name or face and you're going to say hi, you're going to say how you doing. There's a rapport there, right? So you consider that acquaintance. I guess when you think about friendship, you think about a deeper level of understanding and meaning versus just a simple hi and goodbye. How are you doing? Or how's kids and how's life? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. And that's what I think about <laughs> it. <laughs> no, that uh, is, that is, um, I agree. That's pretty much it. And then, then you have your, your good friends. Good friends. What kind of good friends do you have? <laughs> So for me, um, you, you you talked about this in the beginning about um, your your definition of friendship. I think my definition on that and good friends would be, you know, those who um, accept me or those we accept each other for who we are. Mm-hmm. We love and accept each other. So I think for me, it's just really should just be love and acceptance. Love and acceptance. That's yeah, powerful. and without that, without that, it's. I think it's hard. You know, it would be really hard um, without that. And you talked about judgment. Yes, um, we accept each other for who we are, and not judge each other. I mean, okay. Sometimes I would say you can't avoid judging. That's part of it, right? It's part of life. But I think for at some point, like for me, with a couple of friends, we judge each other. We judge each other in a joking way, in a funny mm. way, because we know how, how we are and who we are. But, you know, when we're judging, I think we're kind of sometimes putting each other on check. Yeah, you are. It, it seems like, you know, the bigger the friendship, the the more people tend to rank themselves out like, oh, I'm more closer to this this person than that person or me and this person closer than that person. I want to hang out with you, but I don't want to hang out with her. Right. Mm-hmm. And know what that boils down to, you know, if you think about school, you know, elementary, I think elementary, middle school, and probably high school are probably the worst, you know, just in terms of you're just trying to figure things out. And that kid or that person that wants a friendship, it's always left out. 
like I remember growing up and I want I want friends. You want to play basketball. You always last one picked. I'm like, oh man, it sucks. That's why I have friends. Or I remember I had um, my dad remarried, and I don't know how you call it, but it was my stepmom's sister's son. There was two people at, at school that didn't like. I said something to him. He went back and told them. The next day, they confronted me. All oh, her talking behind my back, right? And it's like I thought we had a trust here, right? And it's like you're going through that period of trying to build trust, trying to fit in, you know, even trying to like get in a group of friends because they're popular, and then you want to maybe talk to that girl or just be be fit in. Like how? Do, like I'm thinking as a kid, like how difficult was it me to establish relationships? Because that applies now to being an adult. It was really hard for me to fit in and establish relationships with people um, and just just trying to be myself. And when I think back to these experiences, it's like it was rough. Like, because if you are not deemed normal, right? Let's say, for instance, in mm-hmm. my case, I was overweight. So I'm not deemed normal because everybody is, you know, 50 pounds less than what I weighed back then. You can't fit in. So how do you, how do you, I'm thinking about how do you gain a friendship when you're different? Like, cause this is no different way, right? So we're talking yeah. about our existing <clears throat> friendships. How about you're just trying to get a friend? And when I consider that, it's, it's how do you do that? You, know, you look at all these hurdles. I need to look a certain way, act a certain way, grade a certain way. How do you fit into all that? And and how does it help? Like, should you fit in? Should you not fit in? You know, I, me, I'm, I'm to the point now. It's like I'm not going to rage against the machine. I don't, I don't have any idea and want to fit in. I want to be myself. And if everybody accepts me for who I am, you know, as I present myself, great. Let's be friends. If you want me to fit in a certain box, no, that's not going to work for me. You can be in that box. I don't want to. As you should, you should really just, you know, be yourself. And you know, you there. I would say like there is group or circle of friends for everybody. There really is. It they're out there. It's just a matter of you know, and, and what happens is we're finding it. We're looking for it. That's what that's what's happening is we're looking for that, you know. Um, and when we're looking, we think we find them, and then we try to fit in. And then we become somebody else that we're not because we're trying to fit in. Yes. And See. Then you're just not happy. And a lot of the times, people surround themselves with people who will tell them what they want to hear. That's true. Just to fit in. Just to fit in. And that's like what I'm thinking about is, so here's another thing. Here's here's a, a switch. How much of it is a social identity? Like if I'm a, if I need, if I need to have friends, and certain things are socially acceptable to have friends. Is a society that deems what friends should look like and who should we socialize with? Yeah. How do we avoid that? And, and you know what? It's harder now to it because with social media. So when we're growing up, we didn't have all this social media. And, and look how hard it is already for some of us already trying to find friends and trying to fit in. Right. Um, it, it's so much harder now because social media tells you something else. You know, um, you have to be this way. You have to look like this way in order for you to be cool. I mean, this is what's harder for a lot of the kids nowadays. And I have noticed that, um, and I've been hearing that with some some of the kids now, some of the youth now, how how hard it is. And it's not that easy because they feel like they have to try to fit in. And as much as I tell them, you don't have to and be yourself because there you will find someone, you will find a group of friends who you can relate with. They're out there somewhere, but it's hard because what they're doing is they're looking, you know, they're looking to see who is cool out there. And I want to be a part of that group because they're fun, but that's not me. So it's all a learning process for a lot of the youth these days. And that's exactly what we went through. You know, like for me, I've had so many friends. I've, I've, I grew up in the Bay area. I've been here for most of my life and I have built so much friendships around here. But as I've gotten older, my circle of friends have gotten smaller. As I've gotten, (laughs) as I've gotten older, I, my um, perspective in life had changed. What has changed? Like, so how you go from a, a plethora of friends 
to now like a small group? What what changed? Like, and why is that I was okay? A social, I was a social butterfly. You know, I was a social butterfly. But I would say that I, I've been lucky that a lot of the friends that I have um, built and that I, you know, a lot of the people that I have met around here growing up have accepted me for who I was. That's just, they look at that, except who you was. Okay. So why did it get yeah, smaller? I mean, you know, it got smaller because, okay, life change. I've added, you know, like I said, a different perspective in life because let's just say that maybe some of those friends have stayed where they are. And I, I, I maybe grown to something different or someone different to, I have, I just see life differently than them. Right. So that's mm-hmm. when we stop connecting. You know, I start losing that connection with certain people. And they start seeing me differently because maybe I'm going through changes in my life and I'm changing. So they're seeing me differently. They're not used to like, you know, the Gloria that they've met once before. But people change, right? Right. We all grow up differently and we all, you know, like I said, we were either in a friendship also, if you have this strong bond with someone, you're either going to grow up together in the same direction, the same path, or you're not. And even if you grow up to different, going separate paths or different paths, you could still be friends and, you know, and kind of still connect, be connected. So now we're talking about love and acceptance. Yes. And may, yeah. And maybe some some of those friends that I've had before just could not accept the new me. Right. But they're still around. They're still here. And I'm still, you know, I would say cool. I would still be cool with them. And I still am. Um, <clears throat> but it's just things have changed and things are differently. I just don't do the things that they do anymore. Yeah, so is that because you're, so I call it the life cycle. So as your life has changed, right, all of us go through cycles in life, right? You know, mm-hmm. at 25, you're not worried about retirement, but at 40, you are, right? Th- that's just an example of a life cycle. What was important to you at 20, right, partying, drinking, or hanging out with friends may not be important to you at 40, you know, have kids, get married, whatever the case may be. And that's the, that's the difference is that as dynamics change in life, you get to see, you know, it's like a sifter. You know, you sift in the sand looking for something. You get to see who stays as you go through life cycles. They go through life mm-hmm. cycles. You go through life cycles. You sifting through that, see who actually stays. Yeah. And I think the one that stays is the one that's kind of a true friend. Mm. Because it's able to look at both how they've changed, have you changed, and we're still good. Versus you're changed and you're different. I don't like it. Well, then you're not accepting who I am, right? Because I'll go through a different life cycle, and that's totally fine. Instead of, you know, instead of saying, well, you change, you're different, right? Which is we hear all the time, or just, I don't, stu- so dumb. You change, you're different, okay? Tell me specifically what have changed and how am I different? Well, no, you just changed. Well, see, that's when people need to get more, look at themselves as an introspection, okay? Well, if I go out and use these slangs, you change, how can I back that with facts? If you said you're different, how can I back that with facts? Because the other person may say, well, how am I different? Help me understand it. What has changed? And then you're sitting there, well, things are just different. Okay, well, give me an example. Let's 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 talk about this here. But most of the time they don't because they don't have no real reason, no facts. They just feel different. Okay, great. Feeling is there. Okay, what what's associated with that feeling? Name it. Angry because you change. Upset because you change. Resentful because... I'm still the same, but you have changed. So you're moving forward where I am not. All right, name this here. Name the feeling here. Just don't say I've changed. And that's how you know the difference between someone that really is there, regardless how life changes, and those that kind of just fade away in the darkness, right? You know, they just mm-hmm. go away. Yeah. And that's what um, what we call, uh, what do you call that? Um, we call that true friends. Is that what we mm-hmm. call our true friends? Those are true friends. <clears throat> those who stays and um what's true friend what's a true friend true friend a true friend comes from a level of acceptance vulnerability mm-hmm. appreciation connection communication um 
building rapport. There we need them. I mean, the list can go, keep going on and on what it looks like as a true friend. Because the flip side to that is, you know, we've all have had those that I call them friend of convenience. You only can, when it's convenient for you, you come into my life. So oh, if, yeah. when it's not convenient for you, I, like that. <laughs> I don't see it at all. It's like six months later, hey, I'm here. Where have you been for the last six months? Like no text, no nothing. You just disappeared. I've had at least a couple of those in my life. And those are just, uh, that doesn't work for me. Friend of convenience. Uh, sorry, I don't need that. Yeah, I, I've had friends like that. And to these days, once in a while, I'll get something like that from, you know, an old friend like that. I would say like, uh, you know, a true friendship or a true friend also is someone who would, you know, stand up for you. Yeah, that's true. Right? That is um, so true. Yeah, someone who will stand up for you. And I think for me personally the biggest thing would be love and acceptance just just love loving that. each other and and accepting each other for who you are um you know like you said or we go through changes right and i could be i i i don't know how many times i've changed i there must have been different versions of glorious <laughs> and Certainly. i can I, yeah i'm sure there was and i can't i can't think of it right now but I've had friends who stayed with me all through those years and all through the changes. You know, I, I had the childish Gloria. I've had the uh, party Gloria. I've had the <clears throat> um, volleyball is my life, like six days a week, five, six days a week kind of Gloria. You know, this is what's important to me. But I've had those friends who s stuck with me all through those years and seeing the changes. That's a true friend. Yes. And despite your changes, they've changed too. You stuck with them. Yes, exactly. And that's how you make, I would say that's how you make the relationship work and keep it stronger and keep it going. So a friend not only is someone that's there for you, but builds a strong relationship and the bond continues to grow and mature over time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think to myself, what's the longest friend I ever had? Actually, I don't, I don't know. And you know what? There's going to be ups and downs, right? There's going to be of some course. challenges. Yeah. It's just like in every relationship we'll have that. It's not, it's not going to be perfect. And I would say like all the friends, a few friends that I've had that I've known for so many years, um, <clears throat> I would say like maybe half of my life or more, you know, we've had challenges, we've had our ups and downs and it wasn't perfect, but that's mm -hmm. part of it. That's all part of, you know, the growing and all part of the learning of what a true friend is and what a true love and, and, and accepting each other and tolerating each other actually you know, I have a um, a friend, um, and I met him through volleyball. He is um, Jose. So, and you know, you've probably heard about Jose many, many times. He's, I would say, one of those people that really, truly had tolerated me and the changes that I've gone through. Patience. See? Had a lot of patience. But I would say that I, I'm not going to say that I didn't do the same for him. No, I see it goes both ways, right? You're getting yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it was like a lot of like learning, like, you know, um, <clears throat> with different types of people, different personalities, and then the changes. You know, we were once kids, and then as we get older, we change. There's times and days it's like, I don't understand why he acts a certain way that he does. And he, I'm sure he doesn't understand why I act a certain way that I do. I mean, there would be times where we would not talk for a week or two weeks because we were just mad at each other. Like kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what it is. But then you fix that. Certainly you do. You find and a way you around can talk it. talk about it. Right. You find a way around it. You can talk about it. And it's unfortunate that I've noticed with some people now or like some of the youth that we have nowadays, it's like they don't know how to communicate like that. You got that right. So that's why, you know, there's a lot of why it's hard to find someone. Um, but once you know, you know. 
I think what you know in time, you know, you know when you know it's the right thing and you know, you know when it feels right. That's what I would exactly. say. You know when you know. Because yeah. I'm thinking about like your friends I've known and I've, I've seen them and like, man, you have a, you have a long-term relationships with friends. Me, it's, it, uh, 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 that's how it feels like uh, maybe a year or two. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's them, right? Maybe I just didn't keep the relationship. Maybe they changed. I mean, I mean, my life has changed so much over the last, you know, at least five years, let alone 20 years, right? My life has changed so much. And it's, you know, how many friendships have I really established? I mean, I think as I'm getting older, I'm establishing better relationships and communication, you know, learning, learning my skill, right? Because one skill that I lacked probably in the friendship was just the communication, just mm-hmm. you know, check it in. Hey, let's hang out. Hey, let's do something together. This, this, just constantly working on a relationship. That's what I think I have lacked, um, and I want to get better at that. And however, I do also um, mitigate the ones that are just. I want to have meaning, deep connections with relationships and friendships, not just surface level. Surface level, not just someone mm-hmm. I hang out with, I get a drink, or we go to dinner, or whatever. But this deeper, meaningful relationships. If it's dead, if it doesn't have that meaning in there. I'm not going to waste my time. No. Yeah. If it doesn't have that and you don't feel that, then no. And, and, you know, you don't have to keep trying to work, work for it. I mean, it is work at some point, but you don't have to try to keep working if you're not feeling it, you know? And for me, I, I value, I value your friendship. I value my friends. So those who I have now around me, I value our friendship. And that's why I have like long, long long-term, um, long-term friendships and that's why they keep growing and that's why long-term and that's why they keep growing yeah you know it's very i would say like having friends or having good friends or just whatever friendship that you have right now if you've had that friendship for a long time and you know that you guys both have that that kind of acceptance and that love for each other um it's it's very important for i would say a lot of our well it's very important for our mental health and and the quality of of our life that we live in. I think it is. You know what I'm thinking about right now? I do probably need a friend in my life, right? Someone to talk to, someone to laugh with, someone to joke with, because, you know, working from home and being at home all day long, God, yeah, who wants to do all? I have my hobbies too, right? So, I mean, Mm -hmm. that's great, but I think I want to have that friendship. I want to build it and communication, the love, the care, the joy, I want to build that. And that's what I'm going to focus on, building better friendships in the future. And I hope you guys out there understand that, you know, friendship can be very difficult. And you got to look at your personal values. Like, what do you value in a relationship? What do you value in a friendship? What does a friendship mean? What what does a relationship mean? How can you build it? How can you grow from it? What happens if you change, right? These questions go on and on, but it helps you dive deeper into you in order to get what you need and value. Yeah, you know what? That's so true. Um, I, I think that, like I said, how how important it is. It is, it's an opportunity to love. Having that strong bond or that friendship with someone is an opportunity to love. I would say also to learn about yourself. Yes, certainly. Yeah, I mean, for me, in my case, I've had, like I said, I've had long-term relationships with, you know, the few people, and you've heard a lot about them. And it's unfortunate that, you know, I've had one that I've, gosh, I've valued for so long, but I think that we started seeing things differently. And there's, you know, there's just been some misunderstanding, maybe, and um, assumptions, right? Um, communication is very important. And if you don't communicate, it's not going to get anywhere and it's not going to get any better. So, you know, I've, like I said, it's, it's unfortunate. We've sort of had a fallout, um, recently, but I think it has a lot to do with communicating with each other. But at the same time, you can't force one, you can't force the other if they're not ready or if they don't want to communicate. Right. <clears throat> Certainly true. But so and in, in the other side to this is that you're open. The other person needs to be open for that. Yeah. And and you know what? It'll come, maybe, right? Only time will tell. 
Um, but like I said, you know, there, it, there's different types of friendships. Um, and you can have a long term relationship with somebody and not realizing that that long one may, may end at some point. It may end. It may end. And then you have one you just recently just had, maybe just, maybe this could be it. So it's not always going to be forever. You know, it'll happen. Things will happen. And I just want to put it out there that, you know, this, this is what life is about. (laughs) There's going to be challenges and obstacles and having, you know, having this, any different type of friendships is what um, you will learn. I would say you'd learn, probably learn about yourself. Um, you'll mature as a human being and you will open up more to the full experience of life. If you've opened for experiences, you experience the full experience of life. The question is, you have to be open for something new. You have to be open. You have to certainly be open. Got that right. All right, guys, I want to say thank you. And always tune in to the Life's a Shuffle podcast. And as you guys know, go to www.life's a shuffle podcast and become a special guest and leave your name there. Share your story, right? We always want to have guests on here talk about their story, where they come from. It creates a more, even though it's a broader dynamic, right? But it brings everybody together as one. And that's the key. Bring people together, share their stories, have these conversations and, and learn more and be more curious. So always, Uh this is Ron Johnson, your mental health coach and soon-to-be psychology practitioner. And thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Yeah, and before we go, before I end it, I just want to I just want to say like one last thing, Ron. I'm truly grateful for crossing paths with you. I mean, I think we've come a long way um, from just (laughs) saying hi and bye, and and now truly building this you know, relationship and friendship that we have. You know what? I, I I will say I second that. I really value our friendship because if it wasn't for you introducing me to IPEC, I, us at least having some communication, I would never be where I am today. So that's, that's huge. Uh, same. And I think you were um, a part of the, you know, the, the beginning of this for me. I don't know if you remember, I, would go back and forth with you. I know I want to be somebody. I want to be something. I don't, it's not a, being a therapist. It's something else. And um, yeah. And, it, you know, then becoming that life coach. And I think um, both you and I have been a part of this uh, from the very beginning. And we've seen each other through all the changes that we've gone through in the past um, several, several years. And I think um, this had, we've built that strong bond and that friendship that we have now and we continue to have and now we now look look where we are the podcast things have certainly changed right yeah so yeah exactly so i am yes i'm truly grateful and and thank you for um just you know just being there for me and having the patience (laughs) just having (laughs) patience with me sometimes and um and for supporting me and believing in me Thank oh, of you. course. <clears throat> yes, Thank you, and, too. Yeah, and again, guys, that's what you call a friendship, true friends, so having that love and acceptance with each other. And thank you again for listening to another episode of Life's Shuffle. This is Gloria, Life Coach and your Meditation Coach.